Those of you that are listening at home, we're going to talk about resistance today. This guy invented resistance. His name is Ohm. Okay, here we go. As the electrons move through a conductor, what's a conductor again? Conductor is something that allows what? Electrons to flow through things like copper, right? Most metals. As the electrons move through a conductor, they bump into the fixed particles, like in the little video that you watched. The fixed particles, with my analogy in the hall, are those people that stand in the hallway causing trouble. Right? And you are the person trying to get to the gym. So as the electrons move through a conductor, they bump into the fixed particles, the atoms in the conductor. Like that. Do you guys have that picture? Yeah. You also have a couple arrows that aren't really labeling anything, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, so you need to show me the free electrons, which are these little blue guys up here on my picture, and these are the copper atoms. They are fixed in place. Okay. If the wire is longer, what does the video say about if the wire is longer? There's more bumps, more resistance, it actually causes more heat. If you use a really long extension cord, you because of the resistance, it can build up heat. And generally longer, the longer the extension cord, generally it has to be thicker, bigger, which reduces the resistance. Okay, it makes it a little bit more wide open. When they bump into the atoms, the electrons slow down and give up their energy as heat and light. I talked about heat already, so extension curve can heat up. Can you give me an example where something lights up? A light bulb. A light bulb, exactly. Certainly the old, the old style ones, right? A light There's a thin filament, you know that little tiny wire if you look at a light bulb? The little tiny wire, right? Would the would the really tiny wire have more resistance or would the big wire have more resistance? Maybe we should have a big one and we get a lot of light. A little tiny one. Okay? In a light bulb, you want resistance. The greater the resistance, the greater the light. The light. But because it's tinier, it's a little more fragile. Okay? So yes, tiny light bulbs have a greater light uh, source. Does that make sense? Yeah? All good? Okay, this opposition to the flow of electrons is called resistance. How much is it going to let me show this video? This opposition to the flow of electrons is called resistance. That's what resistance is, the opposition to the flow of electrons. It's called resistance. And what is it measured in? Measured in those thingies, which are pronounced ohms. Ohms. Measured in ohms. What's this formula? Current is I, voltage is and resistance is R. R. So the formula is I equals V over R. That, my friends, is called Ohm's Law. Voltage, then the current will increase. But if we increase the resistance, then the current will decrease. We saw these concepts in action with the garden hose. Increasing the pressure caused the flow to increase. But getting a kink in the hose increased the resistance, which caused the flow to decrease. The way the equation is written here, it would be easy to use Ohm's law to figure out the current if we know the voltage and the resistance. But what if we wanted to solve for the voltage or the resistance instead? One way to do this would be to rearrange the terms of the equation to solve for the other parameters. But there's an easier way. The uh, 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 will give us the appropriate equation to solve for any unknown parameter. Have we talked about magic triangles? Okay. I'm going to rant a little bit, okay? You know, Rick Mercer rants? And I hate the magic triangles. I also love them. The magic triangles are good for some people, they're very, very bad for other people. Okay? It's kind of like that. If you struggle with math, 
if, if math is, does not work for you, magic triangles will help you. But if you're planning on going on and taking physics with me in grade 11 and 12, I do not want to see magic triangles. Okay? Because the magic triangles only work when there's three, and it's like something equals something times something. That's the only time magic triangles work. I'm going to give you a front of the from grade 12 physics. So centripetal force equal to the mass times 4 times pi squared all over the period squared. There will be no magic triangle that works for that. You're going to need like a magic trapezoid squared invert something. Okay? What I don't want is I don't want you to become dependent upon magic triangle if you're planning to join me in great Okay? If you need help, magic triangles are good. But if you're planning to go on with higher math, don't rely on magic triangles. Learn how to do math. That's my rant. Okay. Without using any algebra. To use this diagram, we simply cover up the parameter we're trying to find to get the proper equation. This will make more sense once we start using it. Uh, so let's so do some examples. It's probably going to cut out right away. because Here's a simple waiting. electric circuit that we use to do our examples. Our voltage source is a battery that is connected to a light bulb, which provides resistance to the electric current. To start off with, Let's say our battery has a voltage of 10 volts, the light bulb has a resistance of 20 ohms, and we need to figure out the current flowing through the circuit. Using our diagram, we cover up the parameter that we're trying to find, which is current, or I. And okay, so if you're trying to solve for I, you cover that up, and the formula that is V over R. That leaves us with the voltage V over the resistance R. In other words, to find the current, we need to divide the voltage by the resistance. Doing the math, 10 volts divided by 20 ohms, results in one half ampere of current flowing in the circuit. 0 0.5. Next, let's increase the voltage to see what happens to the current. We use the same light bulb, the switch to a... I knew that was going to happen. Okay, so we've got volts and we've got ohms, right? So I've got V equals, what is it? 20. And I still got the same light bulb. V R is also 20. What's the missing one? I. Did anyone write down the triangle? Yeah. What's the triangle? What goes on top? V R I, right? So we're solving for? We're solving for I. So you did we do this one already? Yeah. We cover up the I and it's V divided by R, right? 20 over 20. What's the current? 1 M. Okay. They increased the voltage. What happened to the current? It went up. The more push, the more water pressure, the faster the water comes out the hose. Okay, let's go back to my lesson here. Okay, so... Ohm's law, the current in a wire, I, and you guys have this on the flip the page over, right? Flip your page over. It says Ohm's law, you actually have to write it out. That says the current in a wire, I, is equal to the voltage V divided by the resistance. And there it is there in words, and there it is there in letters, and there it is there in units. Am I good to go? Yep. We're going to do some, what comes up next? Oh, I see what comes up next. Some practical everyday examples. Why do we even care? Well, if you like your house to be warm, you should care. If you have electric baseboard heaters, anyone have one of those in their house? Some of you will. Maybe even people have a furnace might have one or two of those lying around, just extra heat. Okay, even a plug-in space heater. Right? Is an example of Ohm's law. Baseboard heaters, electric frying pans that you make pancakes with. Toasters, who has a toaster? Oh, you all have toasters. Uses resistance to make toast. Light bulbs. I'm sure you do. The heater consumes power, producing heat for warmth. 
The frying pan consumes power, producing heat for general cooking. The toaster consumes power, producing heat for cooking toast. And the electric light bulb consumes power, producing heat, and more importantly, light. It doesn't cook toast, toast bread, so then it becomes... Oh, it doesn't become... Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You'll notice here that the, the part of the, uh, the wire where the light is is actually thinner. Why is it thinner? Increases the resistance, gives off more heat. Those are all examples of resistance in your home. Let's look at example number one, question number one. A toaster has a resistance of 100 ohms. If you go home tonight and look at your toaster, you flip it upside down and you'll put crumbs all over the floor and you'll yell at you. But you can say this is for science because I need to know what the resistance of the toaster is. It might say 100 ohms. If the potential difference in an outlet is 120 volts and everyone's house is, then you calculate the current. What is the formula? I equals V over R. We are solving for current. Now, remember I taught you, you should always do what? Write down what you know. Resistance is 100. Yes, resistance is futile. Voltage is 120. I equals V over R. Line up your equal signs. Remember doing that. 120 divided by 100. And I think Lawson is right. What is it? 1.2 amps. I challenge you to go home tonight, flip the toaster upside down, make a big mess. I'll take the heat for it. Little joke there. And tell me what the resistance of your toaster is. It should also give you a current rating as well. Likely. So is ours going to be 1.2? I can't say. Oh, can I just tell you? Can't say. I made it up. This is volts. This is ohms. This is it. Oh, yeah. The next one. Example number two. 15 coulombs of charge are moving through a wire in a minute. If a 100 ohm resistor is added to the circuit, what would be the potential difference? Potential difference, remember, is another word for voltage. And the hint is you will need two different formulas. This is like a country song. It's a two-step. Okay, let's figure out what we know. 15 coulombs of charge. Charge is the letter Q. Q is 15 are moving through a wire in a minute. Is the word minute important? Yes. yes, it is. They gave you a number in a word format. What are they giving you? They're giving you the time. And would your time be one? No. no. It would be 60 seconds. Well done. Okay, so you do have to read carefully. If a 100 ohm resistor, R is 100, what would be the potential difference? Some of you should be circling those to help you. We're solving for V. We're solving for V. Now, the formula that we got today was... I equals V over R. Do I have the R? Yeah. Yes. I do not have the I. I do not have the V. But you're I want to get the V finally. So I'm going to have to find what first? I'm going to have to find the I first. You may have to flip back in your book to find the formula for I. <laughs> While well, Mr. Burnett... Has anyone found the formula for I? Yeah. You should have found I equals Q over, Q over T. Excellent. Now, notice here how I put, did you see how I did that? I sort of did this one over here on the right, and then I kind of worked backwards, because I want to go from left to right in my final solution. Okay? So I equals Q over T. Underneath that, immediately underneath that, What's my value for Q? 15. 15. What's my value for T? 60 seconds. 60. 
due to the dividing. 0 0.25, and you should really put an A there for amps. That's step one. Remember, country song, two step. Now, what do you do with that 0.25 amps? Put it in there. I equals V over R. Oh. Sorry, yeah. So I is 0.25. Solve for V. The R is 100. Now, this is a, how do you solve this? V equals I times R. You can get that from the magic triangle, right? We're solving for V. Cover up the V. You got I times R. I think it's just it's good very well. I tried to restore last time. No, yeah. yeah, just throw it on there. They're supposed to add to them. Okay, so we've got here V equals 0 0.25 times 100. Some of you might be able to do that in your head. What do you get? 25 volts. 25 volts. Many of you will have devices at home. Can I do this one more? Many of you will have this kind of thing at home, right? Little charger, do hit me. What's this thing for? Do I know? Nah, yeah, but what it's really doing is, if you look at it carefully, and holy moly, is that tiny right here? Like, seriously, that is. What that will do is, it says input 110 to 200 volts, output. 5 volts. It takes what's coming out of your wall, takes 120 volts, and it drops it down to 5 volts. It changes the voltage so you got a different voltage coming out here. If you don't have this, what's coming out of the wall is going to be too much power. It'll blow up your phone. Okay? This is a transformer. It, it drops down the voltage for you. Okay? That's what that does. That is all. Okay. I now have this one. This one is hand in. When I say hand in, that means that you do it and then you hand it in. And then it's going to go in your portfolio. You do hand it in. You do. I will not accept this in pen. If you try to do this in pen, you'll get it back. I will get you a pencil. And the reason for that is because you will make mistakes and I will make you do stuff over. I will get you a pencil. Okay? Yeah. Okay, listen carefully and I'll give you a chance. Okay? I need. At the top, it says, write the three formulas that you will need for this worksheet. Two of them are here already. I equals Q over T, and I equals V over R. There's one more. You have to go find it. Okay? In all the cases, I need to see. I need to see this. What do you know? I need to see the formula. I want the answer, and I want a solution. On the back, there is a rubric. Give me 30 seconds. Yep. On the back, there is a rubric. It says, write the givens in the problem. You get four marks if you do it all the time. You get zero if you never knew it. 
you get, you're able to determine what to solve. You wrote down V equals question mark every guy. You get four marks if you do it all the time. You get zero if you don't do it at all. Use the correct formula. Four marks if you do it right every time. Zero if you don't do it. Solve problem correctly. You get the right answer. Use this units in the answer because the units in the answer are important right here. If you don't do that, you don't get all the marks. You got to do all those steps out of them to get 20 out of 20. I will hand this back to you until you get 20 out of 20. You are not allowed to not get 20 out of 20. Use a pencil. If you use a pen, you'll get it back and you'll start over. Do it right the first time, says Mike Holmes. That's a little wise. Begin. Yeah,